My name is Chris Keelock and I'm at the uh, engineering department at the University of Sheffield and the project that we're presenting our material on at the Royal Society is a collaboration between myself, colleagues at the maths department at the University of Cambridge and colleagues in the electrical and electronic engineering department at University College London. The research that we're talking about is um, the construction and development of a radar system for imaging large-scale snow avalanches. These are really important flows to understand because large-scale avalanches can destroy villages and really affect the livelihoods of people in, in mountain communities. The large-scale avalanches that we're interested in usually develop at the top of the mountain as a big slab failure of snow. So this large slab of snow detaches from the mountainside and starts sliding downhill. As it slides downhill, it starts to break up into blocks. Some of those larger blocks form a dense layer at the bottom that kind of clings to the mountainside, but smaller particles, smaller snowflakes, get entrained into a large powder cloud that surrounds, surrounds that avalanche. And when you see it, you might not actually realise there's a dense layer underneath that. And in fact, one aim of our project is to zoom the radar through the powder cloud and actually see what's going on with this dense layer underneath. Because although though the dense layer is somewhat slower and perhaps doesn't travel quite as fast, as the powder cloud, it actually contains the most of the mass of the flow and therefore often is the more destructive part. What we have here is a classic experiment that was actually pioneered in this department in Cambridge University. A granular column, a column of granular particles of two different sizes is, is suddenly released and the experiment is a very simple experiment merely to find out how far those particles travel when the column collapses. What's interesting here is that with the two different sizes of particles we find that the, the maximum extent that the particles travel is actually further than if the particles were all the same size. And how far they travel depends on how you pack them. If you put the smaller particles at the top, the largest extent of travel of any grain is larger than if you put the small particles at the bottom. So although this is a very simple experiment, it contains some quite complicated dynamics. And these are relevant to avalanches because in an avalanche we have a range of particle sizes. We have the large particles flowing in a dense layer, we have the smaller particles. And understanding that interaction is important for understanding how the flow of an avalanche coupled to its powder cloud really behaves.